so zeros are important. Being able to find zeros is sort of the key to the section. Right? If we can find them, that's the goal. And so for our functions, we're going to want to find what's called integer, um, the rational zeros test, meaning my zeros that come out as either integers or fractions, rational numbers or fractions. And so what the test is, is basically, it's kind of like undoing the, if you go back and look at quadratics, it's sort of the AC method for quadratics in a big scale, right? Because the AC method basically comes from, it's a simplified version of the rational zeros test. All right, so what the rational zero test says, if I've got a polynomial with a leading coefficient a to the n, um, an n coefficient of a naught, so this, this a naught would be my constant. What the rational zero test says is that the polynomial with integer coefficients, if p divided by q is a rational number in lowest terms and p divided by q is a zero, all right, then p is a factor of the constant term a and q is a factor of the leading coefficient a n. And so it's just a fancy way to say, to get this zero, all right, in order for this zero to exist, all right, so there's the zero. The fraction comes from the leading term and the constant term, just like when we look at the AC method for quadratics, right? I try to figure out what are factors of the leading term to pair with factors of the constant term. Same idea, just a little more complex here. So if this is a zero, or it, it, the only possibility for this to be a zero is if the numerator is a factor of the constant term. So P has to be a factor of whatever this constant term is. Q, what I divide by, has to be a factor of whatever that leading term is, right? whatever this A to the N is. That is the only way to get a rational zero. It has to follow those parameters. And so we sort of use that in reverse to figure out what my zeros are. So if I want to, so I'm going to walk through an example of using this. Right? It's just easier, I think, to walk through an example. Suppose I want to find the rational zeros, right, the real number zeros of 6x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x plus 4 graphing it. I'm doing this using a table. And so what that previous rule basically says is I look at the leading coefficient and the constant. And so I look at the 6 and the 4, right? The 6 and the 4. I need to find factors of the 4 and pair it with factors of the 6. Right? The leading coefficient there. I and mean, we're just letting p be factors of the 4, the constant term, and q be factors of the 6. And so all I've done here in the first one is write out the different factors. So the possible factors for p, numbers that divide into, that's what factors are, are, and they're always plus or minus, because I could have positive, negative, to multiply out to 4. And so 1 and 4, 2 and 2, negative 1, negative 4, again, so... Basically, I look at 4 and say, what can I divide into 4? Well, I can divide 1 into 4, 2 into 4, and 4 into 4. All right, so those are the factors of P. Then I do the same thing for Q. Q is 6, right, because it's the leading coefficients factor. And so all of the numbers that divide into 6, all of the factors of 6, or, or the integer factors, right, 1, 2, 3, and 6, right? 1 divides into it, 2 divides into it, 3 divides into it, and 6 divides into it. Therefore, in order to be a rational 0, these are the two numbers, two sets that I can use. A rational 0 is of the form, right? It's of the form p divided by q, and, and I find all of the p divided by q, so p divided by q. So this is a list of all of the possible p divided by all of the possible q's, and plus minus just comes along because you could have a positive or negative version. And so the first one is where I've taken 1 divided by all of those numbers. So 1 divided by 6, that's where the 1 6 comes from. 1 divided by 3, there's the 1 third. 1 divided by 2, there's the um, 1 half. 1 divided by 1, that's there. 
and then I do the same thing with 2. 2 divided by 9. These kind of got mixed out of order. But same idea. I could take 2 divided by 3. That's the 2 thirds. I could take 4 divided by 3. That's the 4 thirds. I can take 2 divided by 1, which is 2. And I can take 4 divided by 1. And there are all of the different factors possible. All right, reduced fractions possible. So those are all of the possible zeros. Right, so there are eight of them with the plus or minus that makes 16 of them total. And then what you do is, well, in order to be a zero, when I plug it into my function f of x, when I plug these in, in order to be a zero, I need to have zero coming out. And so that's what we do. And I gave you all of them. Now, usually you stop once you find your zeros. Uh, but in the table here, I've listed all of them. All right? They've all been listed. And so that's literally what we've done is we've taken every single one of these possible zeros, plugged it into our original function, and see what we get. And so what we're looking for is our zeros. And so the first zero is the 1 half. Right? So there's a zero. I keep looking through my table. The next zero is at negative 1. And the next zero is at 4 thirds. And it would stop there. Because it's a cube, I can only have at most three. So once I've found three zeros, I could have stopped. Now I went through to verify that it was the case. All of the rest of them did not give me out zeros. And so my zeros are 1 half, negative 1, and 4 thirds for the function f of x, which was 6x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x plus 4. I actually think that's my line there. So I've, I've put, so my three rational zeros are 1 half, negative 1, and 4 thirds. All right, so the factored form is, so remember, I use my zeros and my a. So a is 6, right? a comes from the 6 there. And so when I factor that, I've got to remember to include the, the leading coefficient because my factors are that a times x minus my, you know, my different zeros. And so it's going to be 6 times my 3 factors. And I'm just going to leave my, factor, my factors as those fractions. x minus a half, x minus a negative 1, which is really plus 1, x minus 4 thirds. And there's f of x completely factored. Now, you could clean it up and make it a little nicer if you multiply through by the 6. You split the 6 into 2, multiplied it through here, right? And you can multiply through this by 3. But I'm not. That's perfectly fine to leave it in this form. And so the factor form would be 6 times x minus 1 half, x plus 1, x minus 4 thirds. And so we're going to kind of do that hand in hand with synthetic division. Now, we're not going to go through the complete process of doing this. Because, again, once we start to find a zero, we're actually going to stop there once I get my first zero. And then I'm going to use synthetic division and that first zero to keep me going. All right, so we're going to kind of do this hand-in-hand -hand with synthetic division. And so that's what I'm going to do in the next example. So that was an example of using the rational zeros test in order to factor my polynomial.